Okay, today's one is um, about risk. Uh, so, um, and <laughs> I don't have something sticking out. <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm in a property that we're still developing, although, you know, we're not far off. <laughs> there you go, there's my telly. Oh, and there's a fridge. <laughs> so, um, so uh, <laughs> I've almost got, <laughs> I've almost got a living room. Um, today's one is about risk. Uh, I work with uh, a lot of folks in our mentoring group and I absolutely adore it. And one of the things I'm very keen on is when I've got folks that are really quite talented developers or looking at planning gain, I'm keen on helping them think through the mitigation of their risk. I speak to a good friend of mine who tells me that 50% of developers go bust, presumably the other 50% of people do extremely well. So the, ri the reward is great, but the risk is very substantial. So if you guys are thinking I'm gonna be a developer, I'm gonna do the kind of currently fashionable commercial to resi, I'm not saying don't do it, but just be conscious there are greater risks. I've done hundreds of refurbs, kind of two grand to 60 grand, you know, which is basically vanilla, you know, like 20, 30 grand refurbs on average, right? You go in, you nail it, you turn it around, you project man it fast. The difference between going from a, tw a 20, 30 grand refurb or a 50 grand refurb up to a 200,000 pound refurb is huge. And really the people that I see that are primarily successful in development are doing it like, you know, let's think about it like a cake. And the development is the cherry on top. So they're doing it when they've already got plenty of cap. Oh, by the way, that's not live. <laughs> if you're thinking I'm about to electrocute myself, it's fine. <laughs> it's not live. So they're doing it when they've already got portfolio. They're doing it when they've already got capital behind them. They're doing it when a 20% increase in costs means they just go, oh, darn, and pull my money out. They're not doing... Uh, bigger scale developments purely based on bank funding because that's really risky. So if you're going to be a developer, absolutely go for it. But what I'd want you to do is a kind of boring, well, I don't think it's boring because it's worked out beautiful for me, but the boring slippers, as one of my friends said, uh, buy to let so that you've got a lovely portfolio chunging away in the background. And so you can run developments knowing you've got the backup of masses of equity, the backup of cash flow, and then you can run developments. So that's that's kind of what we did is we got we did loads of vanilla projects so kind of 20 odd grand refurbs varying from like 2 grand up to 60 grand but you know 20 to 30 is the average turned them around either rented them straight back out again or did them as buy to sells but you were fast in you'd buy the property on the Friday you'd get in on the Monday none of this waiting for planning approval planning gain or anything like that you'd spend I don't know eight weeks ten weeks whatever it was renovating it and then it'd be back out again on the market like super fast or back out again uh, for buy to let uh, being rented out just when the paintbrush is being finished that way we didn't when cash was so ridic ridiculously tight we didn't lose many days to a property being held up for reasons outside of my own um management you know i mean occasionally you have problems with builders and such like but primarily it was get in every second counts every penny counts and get it back out again either sold or developed if you're going from kind of zero to hero, zero to 100, and you're do, gonna do development straight away, you've got all sorts of planning niggles, you've got all sorts of planning um, delays. I mean, I now am doing a grade two style at a chapel, which is great, but we had a long planning delay when we had to do the pre-commencement conditions, get them signed off. Now, could I have afforded that in the beginning? No, can I afford it now? Yes, particularly the price I paid for the chapel in the first place. I'm gonna just take my time and get it done right. But that take my time attitude wasn't my attitude in the beginning and certainly couldn't have been financially my attitude in the beginning. So what am I saying? I'm saying don't lose the, plat the dream of being a big developer, but go in steps. People don't become Olympic athletes overnight. They, they go in, they train, they train with a coach, they develop, they get greater skills and greater skills and they build on their abilities and then they take the next step up. Um, and I'm not one for being cautious, but I have worked with hundreds of people, watched thousands of property people go through their journeys, and it is a repeated theme that people that go from zero to, I'm gonna be a commercial developer, I'm gonna do planning and all the rest of it, have a much lower chance of success, much greater cash flow challenges, and I'd like you to take step one, step two, then step three. 
So step one, maybe you source for other people. Step two, maybe you joint venture with people, 13.3, be aware of all that stuff. Step three, maybe you buy and keep your own portfolio. Step four, maybe you buy and sell under your own steam. Step five, now you're developing serious levels of, of property. Try not to do step one straight to step five. I think you won't necessarily have all the skills, and I don't mean that rudely, it's just, you know, it takes a while to learn this stuff. Uh, and I found it was a huge difference going from a, a 20, 30 grand renovation to a 200 grand renovation. I made loads of mistakes in the, in, in the process. So just grow incrementally until you have a portfolio that can support everything you need and then move into the big time, if it, as we would call it. So commercial Terezi, fabulous, but potentially take your training wheels on first, your stabilizers, and then get there. I hope that's reasonable. Tell me what you think. Speak soon.